So let's all open our minds to new possibilities as we welcome Aidan Stone. We're in the business of ideas. And that's very interesting in this time in our civilization because we're entering a new age, an age that pundits have called the conceptual age or the age of ideas. We, we've got, we've got 60% dull people and 40% geniuses in this very room. But which are which? You can't tell by looking at them. But there is a test that we could do right now to find out which is which. But the question is now, would you want to take the test? You've all heard of the left and right brain. But people misunderstand what that actually is about, and they think that it's like this. I'm a left brain person. I'm reliable, sensible, dependable, and lots of other words that end in ibble. I like doing things logically, sequentially, everything in its place, everything at the right time, and in the right order. <laughs> this is exactly my point, you see, you're not innovative enough, you're not creative enough, you're not flexible enough. Come on, the top predator, top of the food chain. <laughs> I've spent millions of years building up my reputation. <laughs> I'm a right brain person. I'm an artiste. I turn up when I want, do what I like. Genius is mysterious. <laughs> the truth is, if you were just a left brain or a right brain, and only used half your brain, you would be a half of it. Yeah, what if? What if you were a lot more talented than you thought you were? What if, if you were capable of a lot more things than you thought you were? What if there were things that you cut off from your life when actually they should be part of your life? Yeah, it's, it's, it's about how you relate to creativity and where you find it and where it comes from, because that company weren't very creative. What they said was, yeah. If one of our workers has thought of an idea, it must be so obvious, it must be staring us in the face if one of our plebs has thought of it. OK, keep your hands up because these are the creative geniuses in the room. Yes. <laughs> it is about 40% as I thought it would be. Keep your hands up because the other people want to see who you are. These, these are the faces that you need to remember. Uh, don't leave because these are the people who will be able to help you out, OK? So you can put your hands down. Everybody is born highly creative. Everybody is born equal in that respect. The answer question you should be asking is, what are you going to do with it? And it's what you do with it that makes a difference. Everybody has the same potential to be creative in one way or another. you got to do everything that you can. Everything that you plan, everything that you Now the reason I tell you that story is because in that moment, in that moment, I became a scientist. And I want you to think about it. Because in that moment, I asked the question, what if? What would happen if? That's, that's how science begins. And I, I created an experiment, didn't I, to find out what would happen if. But in that moment, I also became an artist because I wanted to manifest an outcome. I wanted to, you know, to us all have a little laugh. <laughs> and what we find is that there will be a similar moment for you when you became a scientist or when you became an artist. When you're it's the domain of inventors. It's the domain of explorers. It's the domain of true scientists who ask those questions, what if? It's the domain of the artist who says, how can I manifest something in this world, something new? Be a creator, and that's what we all, we all are, that's how, that's how it Archimedes was a Greek in the back, and he said, Eureka, you've got to have a land you found. Another great idea. Einstein was traveling on the beam of life, and he thought of something strange that night, that he was empty square, who right it was. Another great idea. What will be a better way of doing it? And that's what I want you to, to leave you with. That is the power of what if. I am Aidan Stone, thanks for inviting
That research wasn't ratified by the NIHR. 